inferential statistics, we can compare two population means when we sample between two means or sample um, independently between two groups um, by doing a confidence interval of the difference between the two population means. Now, when we're saying that we sampled from two groups is that we took a random sample from one group and we took a random sample from another group. We didn't just randomly sample from one group and compare it to um, specific referenced numbers from the other group. We actually sampled from two groups. The other thing is independent sampling means that the individuals from the first sample do not dictate the individuals that we pick from the second sample. So that's when we have our independent. Now in this video we're going to talk about finding a confidence interval for the difference between two population means when we did independent sampling. So here we have, if we're constructing a 1 minus alpha times 100%. Now remember, alpha is the area in the two tails. So 1 minus the alpha gives us the area in the middle of the distribution. So let's say our alpha was a 0.05 area for the combined area in the tails. Then 1 minus 0.05 would be 0.95. 0.95 times 100 would be 95, so that would be representing a 95% confidence interval. Now for the difference between two independent means, so difference, remember in mathematics, that means you're doing a subtraction. So you're taking one, subtract the other. So you're actually seeing how far apart those are in a subtraction way. The biggest th thing here is when you go to kind of give information and interpret the results of your confidence intervals with the differences is that you really are not saying what the actual values of the means of the two groups are in that confidence interval. You're saying how far apart they are as differences. That's the confidence interval that you're getting. Now, we need to make sure that they are simple random samples taken from the two populations. And the two populations are either known to be normal or you're taking a sufficiently large sample size. And sufficiently large sample size when we're talking about our population means using the central limit theorem is that your n sub 1 is greater than or equal to 30 and your n sub 2 is greater than or equal to 30 if you don't know that the individual population's distributions are normal. Now, when we have those conditions met, then the confidence interval about the population mean of the first group minus the population mean of the second group. So this is the difference between the two populations. That's the confidence interval we're doing. Is, this is gonna give you your lower bound to the next expression is giving you your upper bound. So notice, both of these have in parentheses the sample mean of the first group minus the sample mean of the second group. So you're taking the subtraction of the sample means. That's the number that you have here. Now, to get the lower bound, you take that point estimate of the sample difference of the sample means, subtract your margin of error, and then take the point estimate and add your margin of error. So here's the subtract it and add it. That's to get you your lower bound when you subtract, upper bound when you add. And then t sub alpha over 2, so remember that alpha you get from working with what confidence interval you have, and it's the student's t distribution. When they're using these symbols, they're trying to help you know which distribution to go to. t sub alpha over 2 is the student's t distribution. In other applications, if I have z sub alpha over 2, that's the standard normal curve. If I have chi sub L and chi squared sub L and chi squared sub R or U, that's the chi squared distribution if I'm dealing with other parameters. But for the difference between the two means, it's the T sub alpha over twos. And my multiplication of that T sub alpha over two is to the square root of S sub one. Remember, S sub one is your sample standard deviation, squared is your sample variance over n sub 1 plus s sub 2 squared over n sub 2. So here's your information from your first group that you sampled and here's from your second group that you sampled. And then the same thing there. So that's what you would do if you had to work this out by using the formula. 
and calculating everything by hand. Now, the thing with this sort of application when you're doing this by hand with the formulas is that T sub alpha over 2 requires you to have a degrees of freedom. When you sample from two groups, that degrees of freedom is something that if you're trying to get where you have it um, and more specific, you can have a formula that you would run through to get your degrees of freedom. If you're looking at doing this by hand and you're going to do a less, um, a more conservative uh, value of it, sometimes they'll have you say, uh, using either the smaller of n sub 1 minus 1 or n sub 2 minus 1 degrees of freedom if by hand. Um, this is done with uh, the by hand one. If you're working in a class that you're trying to find this out with, then you would want to look at the author of the textbook that you're referring in or the notes of your instructor for your class to see how they define the degrees of freedom if you have to do this by hand um, or which uh, formula they use for the degrees of freedom for that. Uh, if you're doing this in terms of a research project, you just want to state how you came up with what degrees of freedom that you used and your justification for that. Now we're going to use the TI-83 or TI-84 calculator software package that's in here and how to do it through the work with that. Um, so the degrees of freedom are going to be calculated by the software package in the calculator. All right, so here, we have an example, a random sample of business travelers is, and vacationers was taken and their walking speed was recorded. So I have business travelers and vacationers and I'm sampling from both groups. For 32 business travelers, the mean speed was 272 feet per minute with the standard deviation of 43 feet per minute. For 33 vacationers, the sample mean was 261 feet per minute with a standard deviation of 47 feet per minute. Find a 90% confidence interval for the difference between the two population means. So I'm trying to find a confidence interval for the difference between the two population means. Now, if I do this using the calculator, then what we want to do is we want to go and find on the graphing calculator, the TI-83 or TI-84, the STAT button. So you push the button that says STAT. And then after you do that, um, you'll see an option of test. And then you'll have a whole bunch of different choices to make. We want an interval, so we want to go past the ones that say test to the ones that say interval. And we sampled from two groups, and we're doing the T interval. So the thing that you pick there is to samp T int. So that's the one you're going to choose. Now when you push enter on that, the first thing it's going to do is ask you for input whether you have data or whether you have stats. Now, if instead of them giving us all of this information for what the mean and the standard deviation of the first group is and the mean and the standard deviation of the second group, if they gave us a cluster of the numbers of the walking speeds of individual business travelers, and then a whole bunch of walking speeds for individual vacationers, then I would put the data in L1 for the business um, travelers, and I would put the data for in L2 for the vacationers, and then I would have data in L1 and L2 before I even went to the stat tests and then down to the two sample t-test. Now, that's if I have data but I have stats because they pre-calculated the statistic values of the mean and the standard deviation for each of the groups. So you're gonna cursor over so that it's on stats. And when you cursor over so it's on stats, the choices change of what you need to enter. So next up, it's going to ask you for X bar sub one. And remember, X bar is the sample mean notation from the first group. 
So it says, of the 32 business travelers, the mean speed was 272. So we're going to put a 272 there for the sample mean. And then it's going to ask you SX1. And remember, that's the representation for the sample standard deviation. So the sample standard deviation of the first group is 43. And then it's going to ask you N1. And N1 is your sample size of your first group. And our sample size of our first group is 32 business troubles, so 32. Okay, then after that, it's going to ask us X bar sub 2. So that's the sample mean of the second group. And the sample mean of the second group is 261. SX2 is the sample standard deviation of the second group, and that is 47. And N2 is the number in our second sample, and the number in our second sample is we have 33 vacationers that were sampled, so that's 33. Now, after that, it's going to ask you for the C level, and our C level that they want us to do is 90%, so you push 90% or 0.9, and then calculate, and then it's going to ask you pooled or not pooled, and you're going to say no. So we're not making any assumptions that the standard deviations of the two populations were the same, so we're not going to use a pooled estimate for the standard deviation. So you, for pooled, say no. And then it'll give you the value in parentheses of negative 7.645 and then a comma and 29.645. And under that, it's also going to tell you that it used the degrees of freedom of 62.791. So it's telling you it did go through the more um, accurate uh, degrees of freedom calculation that's been programmed into the software to get where it has um, a more accurate confidence interval for this uh, level of, of confidence with it. Now, remember, this is a confidence interval for the difference between two, the two means. The sample mean of the first group is 272. The sample um, mean of the second group is 261. So it is giving you a confidence interval of the subtraction, the difference between them. When we want to write this out as a sentence so that we don't report it with parentheses around it and just a comma in between, we want to make sure we're stating what we actually are um, giving them as information. So what you want to do is take off the word find, capitalize the A. So you're going to say a 90% confidence interval for the difference between the two population means of business traveler walking speed minus vacationer walking speed is negative 7.645 to positive 29.645 feet per minute. Now it might ask you to interpret your results. Well, remember when you're subtracting, if you have big minus little, like 20 minus 2, you'd get 18. Positive 18, because it was a bigger number, subtract a littler number. Now, if you have little minus big, if you go 2, subtract 20, you get negative 18. So, big minus little is a positive answer, and little minus big is a negative answer. When I'm interpreting the confidence interval for the difference between the two population means, if my confidence interval in another setting went positive low end to positive high end, well I get positive answers from subtracting when it's big minus little. So in that case I would have sufficient evidence, the data would indicate that the first population's value was bigger than the second population's value. If I have negative low bound to negative high bound, then 
the first one would be smaller than the other because small minus big is how you get negative numbers in a subtraction. This example, I have a negative lower bound and I have a positive upper bound. So that means I didn't have consistency throughout the entire interval of whether it was little minus big or big minus little. So I have no sufficient evidence for my data to indicate one of those was consistently bigger than the other. So when I did this 90% confidence interval and I got a negative number for the low bound and a positive number for the up bound, uh, upper bound, there is no significant evidence to indicate that the walking speed of the business travelers is different than the business or the walking speed of the vacationers.